Good morning, friends, or good afternoon, friends. Uh, my name is Catherine Johnston. I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator at Path Employment Services. Uh, just to let you know a little bit about um, what this series is about, um, we do a series of interviews called Let's Talk Careers, and we uh, speak to uh, different folks in different types of uh, careers and occupations to get to know a little bit more about uh, what they, how they navigated through life to get them to where they are, um, to maybe give some insight to those that are thinking about uh, getting into that certain career or thinking about changing it, that career or just want to know a little bit more about that type of career, um, to have a personal conversation and a personal lens um, about those uh, different occupations and careers out there. I want to welcome our guest today, uh, Laura Ke Keating. Uh, Laura is uh, here visiting us virtually from Hamilton. Thank you, Laura, for joining me on this Let's Talk Career series. Hi there. <laughs> we might be freezing Hi, a little. We'll do our best. Thanks for having me on your show. <laughs> no, it's really nice to have you. So, Laura, you. Um, we'll start, I guess, with um, just a general question I ask a lot of our guests. What, what was your very first job? Uh, well, the job I trained for was in advertising, so um, okay. I did take radio broadcasting many moons ago. <laughs> um, so I would say that was my first uh, career job. Um, it was, it, I kind of flipped a coin. I, I'm, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to go into, but I knew I wanted to get busy with something. And um, I kind of grew up in a musical family, so I did a lot of music writing um as a teen mm -hmm. and so I was always creating something that way with words and and I loved music so I found radio um to be maybe a good mix of music and writing mm -hmm. so I ended up as a copywriter and I did this a few years and radio working in a radio station was a very um fast-paced environment and always actually fun I, I'd like to have fun at work Mm -hmm. um, there was always something new going on, and you were always every day creating um, sort of an audio movie. That's the way oh, I would look yep. at it. Mm -hmm. um, working with, you know, your clients, working with your production staff, um, and your sales team. A lot of deadlines in radio. Uh, mm -hmm. I realized uh, I really got immersed in that, and it would be sometimes annoying because you'd be you know, getting ready to go out the door and your salesman would come in and go, this has got to go on the air in a half an hour. So mm -hmm. you, you have to do things like that. But uh, it was a very creative job and I really did enjoy that part of it, just the creating. And you can enter competitions too at the radio. We, we did have one ad we did. Um, it was for a Cambridge Home Hardware of all mm -hmm. places. <laughs> and they kind of gave us free free freedom to just kind of do what we wanted to do but just make sure that we got the message across you know? yep and uh so the producer and I we came up with this thing where we did like a Lionel Richie and Diana Ross kind of song so we actually sang the jingle but we got an honorable mention in the Canadian Radio Awards back in uh oh so many years ago but it was so cool just to do those kind of things you just laugh a lot at work and but you had a lot of work to do too. It sounds like fun. Did you go to but, school? Like, did you go to school for communication and? Yes, and I did radio. Yeah, I did radio, um, diploma in radio broadcasting. Um, okay. I did a lot of voicing of commercials and writing, but then I moved into, after that, I moved into print advertising. So I mm -hmm. worked in fashion and then I ended up in, in hardware again um, and okay. a little bit of a managerial role after writing for a while there. Um, hmm. So that was my stint in that. Um, so to get to songwriting, singer songwriter, uh, in between all that, I was a stay at home mom for a few years. I raised mm -hmm. four boys. And uh, then I got into teaching piano privately. So um, yep. that was something I, I needed to stay home, still raise the kids. And uh, piano, that just sort of came into my life. It was unplanned. But it just turned into a really great thing where word of mouth just passed along. And I did that for 20 years. Wow. So, um, so it's in the last 10, 11 years that I've, I've 
you know, moved back into guitar and, mm -hmm. and uh, started writing again. I used to write so much as a teenager. Um, so I just got back into that and it was just sort of a lot of feelings and a lot of expression coming out that way. Mm -hmm. And just wanted to get performing after a while of writing. It's just, it was just a natural progression. And mm -hmm. uh, then we then we put an album together and uh, I work, um, really when I started, uh, I didn't really have a plan as to what I was going to do with the music at this stage of my life. It just sort of one step at a time led to mm -hmm. the next. And it's crazy how, how, how fun it's been and how, I feel like I've accomplished a lot in a short amount of time. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's just been, I don't know, just that, that passion of uh, music and, and uh, creating something that's your own. Mm -hmm. and it's a, yeah, it's just- it Must be very rewarding to, to, to have something out there that you know that you put your heart and soul into and- it, it, Yeah, it really is. It, I, I think of the, you know, one of the first gigs that I had, and this was all solo stuff um, when I first started playing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was so rewarding. I remember I was uh, working out at a winery in Beamsville. And I just remember the, you know, and when I first started, like, I was writing, I was performing, it was so new that, you know, if you've been playing for a few years and you have a repertoire ready, you kind of just, you know, gloss over things because stuff is really ready still, right? You've got mm -hmm. that reserve. But when you're new at it, you've got all this new material. It's not all completely gelled in your head. Mm -hmm. So I remember practicing, like, you know, I'd play two or three hours before I went to the show. And then I'd, you know, get out there, drive out there, set up, do your show for two or three hours, and then come home. I was beat. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, I remember being very conscious of the fact that I was doing it all on my own, and there was such a, a feeling of satisfaction mm -hmm. and just to, you know, get dressed up, load my car, go and do it. I was totally independent. I was doing all my original material. Oh, that's awesome. And I, you, you just felt like an entrepreneur, and then you'd mm -hmm. see, you know, you'd get that audience reaction, which was. I can't tell you there's just when I look at my whole life there's just nothing that compares to when you're putting some songs out there that you that meant so much to you when you wrote it mm -hmm. and you kind of try and convey what it was that went into writing it mm -hmm. and then you see that good reaction from an audience member there's nothing there's nothing like it I just mm -hmm. it feeds you I gotta say that I perform better with a room full of people than nobody yeah because you that that energy flows back and forth and mm -hmm. uh, yeah there's a connection there in the room there really is a connection mm -hmm. and that's what that's what I really love about performing um mm -hmm. it, it, yeah it's just there's just nothing to, nothing like it I mean sometimes you do get a case I think you get a case of I don't want to say the case of the nerves but you get that kind of that buzz about you you know like mm -hmm. it's like that energy is sizzling in you a little bit. And then once you get out there and you get in the groove, you just kind of get into that relaxed mode and, and it's, it's a wonderful feeling. So I so am you, grateful for, for doing this. Do you travel when you, when you play? Like, do you, do you go outside of like this area or our area here? Um, like, you... Basically, I've actually had more luck being outside of Hamilton. Okay. <laughs> Truthfully, um, on the outskirts, um, uh, like I said, the winery country mm -hmm. uh, was missing. Unfortunately, COVID came into the picture. I had a booking. I was so excited. Last February 29th, I was supposed to play at uh, the Prince of Wales Hotel. Oh, nice. I was so excited in oh. the Churchill Lounge. Um, mm -hmm. But I got sick before actually COVID started. And then um, I had to cancel the gig. And then when oh. I was ready, COVID was here, and all the all the the stuff lined up, uh, kind of went in the trash can. Wow. Um, 
which was disappointing because a lot of a lot of my work to get work you have to work at getting work. Mm -hmm. yep. so if you want to be busy you have to be very busy getting busy mm -hmm. and um I was in the midst of doing a lot of pitching uh so that means you know not just not just getting on the phone but having your your press kit ready your album uh you shoot that off that your digital files which is I guess a lot more convenient than the old days, but, um, <laughs> you know, making sure you have your photos of yourself ready. You have to have a package. And mm -hmm. once you get, once you, when you start that, it's a, it's very uh, involved, but once you get it done, then you can add to it or, you know, edit things as you go. And you've got something like, I, I pitch all the time to, um, radio stations right now my, my album and I'm, I'm going further afield with that mm -hmm. and just learn as you go um I just remember when putting the album together um things lined up I know that was I call it my destiny because I've been writing writing things since I was about 15 years old and it's just carried all the way through my life whether I realized it or not Mm -hmm. And and when all this singer songwriter stuff happened with me, um, I had such a a desire to to pursue this that it just seemed like nothing would stop me. Um, I even started even to to begin getting shows. I busked, and mm. who the heck busks? Like, but you know what? I I'm being so truthfully honest here. Is yeah. that I remember the first day I busked. I went on a September day, mm -hmm. middle of the week, well, somewhere. Mm -hmm. Someone knew me, and I did it. And I'm telling you, Catherine, it was like a bird that got let out of cage. Really, that's awesome. I, really, it, I just and I did it for uh, about a year or two. I busked on and off, and you know what? I got feedback on the street, like just mm -hmm. people liking what I was doing, and. And through that, of all things, uh, one one occasion in particular, I got noticed by a talent promoter when I was out busking, and mm -hmm. that's how I got to do the festival at the park. I did it's your festival in two thousand and fifteen. Mm -hmm. Yep, totally new for me. Mm -hmm. Had only been doing uh, live shows uh, for maybe a year, and hardly any because you're just starting out. So. Yeah talk about talk about leaps and hurdles but it was mm -hmm. like just you know what trusting that I was on the right path I just really uh felt good about what I was doing and um I wanted to mention today for anyone that's listening and, and starting in a career or whatever I because I was preparing a little bit for this interview um a couple of things that I did and I don't know if anybody else does it but when I worked in print advertising, my last job, I remember it was a small company. They had about nine stores and we were an in-house agency. And I remember having this mindset and my mindset was, I'm going to pretend to myself that this is my company. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember making that kind of declaration in my own heart. And so I was very particular about how I did my work. And I was, I mean, I was one of two copywriters. There was a few, a couple of artists. There was a production person and a bo couple bosses. Very small outfit. But I remember just having that mindset made all the difference in how I felt about my job. Because mm -hmm. when you feel like it's yours, you don't want anything to leave your desk that isn't as mm -hmm. good as it can be. And uh, I, I did that and I ended up being uh, moved into another position because of that. My work was going to the next person in the line, the supervisor, to, to proof all our work. Mm -hmm. It turned out that anything that was coming from my area and this other writer that we had, we made sure that our work was 100% right in our eyes. Anyway. Mm -hmm. And when it went to the next step, 
the supervisor had nothing to do because there was <laughs> nothing to correct. So she ended up leaving because she was bored. So I moved into her job. So it was very, very weird how that happened, but I attribute it to that mindset, just like kind of, you know what, if this is my stuff, it's very uh -huh. important, I'm going to do the best I can. And I think that's a huge thing if you can do that, no matter what kind of job you're in. If you really, if you, if you just pretend that this is, it's got your name on it. Yep. Take you know, ownership. Take ownership for the work that you're putting forward. Yeah. Ownership is huge. Yep. And you know what? I think you get a lot of respect for that. It it, it shows up um, and you, you can move forward into higher positions or whatever. Mm -hmm. It just takes you. It's, I just think it's a good mindset to have. I remember making that that thing. I mean, not every job you want that you have that are you going to like either. I mean, no, of course not. not. But it's still important to think that way. I I think the same way. I don't know that I've ever said those words, but it's exactly how I feel when you said it. It's like yes, that's how I perform my jobs. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a good it's a good mindset to have. I don't think you can harm you. <laughs> no, I certainly can't. No. No, yeah. and it might make you like a job a little bit better that you might not like very much, right? <laughs> at least you get some get some value out of it. I mean, yeah. you're gonna probably find. I mean, I've had jobs that I didn't like. I was mm -hmm. saying to you prior about working in a, a cafeteria and oh, drinking yeah. as a teenager, and I just yeah. knew that I just did not want to do this. So yeah. I wanted more. Um, more out of life and it's just I've been uh, blessed with uh, um, having uh, the freedom to do the work that I'm doing right now mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm in a position where uh, I'm not like other musicians where I'll be truthful like I'm in a position where I can do this and I'm not financially reliant on it so mm -hmm. I'm lucky that way for musicians starting out it is a different story and i have my brothers uh they're musical uh, they're in pr the profession themselves and i've seen the ups and downs and that's probably why i didn't go into it directly mm -hmm. as a teenager i saw um a lot of instability in the music career mm -hmm. but um i saw the passion in my brothers to the extent that they went into you know sciences and things like that and engineering for one or two years and their love of music it just pulled them away from those those mm -hmm. more stable careers and mm -hmm. they had to follow their dream and they've been at it ever since so highs and lows yeah um but i'm a full believer in that if you have a passion for something that whether you take it in a career move or whatever cultivate it at least Mm -hmm. there's obviously people are given some sort of talent some strength otherwise we'd all be the same mm -hmm. so we all have strengths that are individual and I think it's so it's it's a, I think it's a responsibility of each person to to follow their strengths mm -hmm. and chances are you're going to be happier in the long run because you'll find a way to 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 manage and and being open to you know what maybe you have your heart set on on being a singer songwriter or you want to be uh whatever um just be aware that it doesn't always come at once mm -hmm. and there's lots of detours to get in different directions to get to this place right um like with music I'm, i never planned on being a piano teacher but you know what, with, you know, I wanted to do something and I wanted to stay home and I wanted to juggle things and, and I put my heart into that. And I, I've been blessed with a lot of students over the years and, and basically from word of mouth. Just oh, you very know, much. My even, even my son <laughs> for a couple lessons. Yeah. It's a small so, you know, world. Go. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, yeah. Just. And I, I taught my students too. I don't know. I'm, I'm like a mom, I guess, when I get to piano. But I look at those kids coming in and I say, you know what? I remember taking lessons when I was, when I was little. 
-hmm. And I didn't like what I was studying. I was doing classical stuff and I was not into it. And you Mm -hmm. know what? Unfortunately, I quit earlier than I should have, but I took the next seven, 10 years and I played everything else and wrote my own. Mm -hmm. So I took what I had and I branched off. I wish I'd had a little bit more direction back then as to saying, okay, Laura, you know what? You don't want to play Mozart. Okay, yeah. let's put in lessons that are pop. So, you know, mm-hmm. as a teacher, I, I talk to my kids. I get them, you know, learning the basics. And then I go, what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. I'm a, I mean, I've had kids go through the exam routine. But in my, my belief, uh, with my personal situation, I've had more luck with students. Uh, staying with piano when I've given them the freedom to choose the types mm-hmm. of music that they want to play. And uh, I, you know, I've had kids stay with me seven, eight years. And that is a real um, blessing to me that I've maintained them that long mm-hmm. because I've been open. Like I, I feel that's a real, a real important part. Not to, not to say that I'm not strict, but just, you know, You want to learn how to play, you know, whatever, something very popular. And and there's a lot of value in that, learning funky rhythms. And but you know, you learn how to break it down and you go, okay, you see that? Well, you see it there, 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 and there. See there's a pattern. Mm -hmm. You see the structure of the song, and then you go, what is that hard thing? Well, let's just pull it apart. And you pull it apart and they go, oh, that's what that is. <laughs> it looks like a mess on the page, but you know when you break it down, and and then these kids are going off and they're going, you know what? I'm not afraid to pick up. That's my biggest goal. Is that when you leave me, not everybody stays with me for that long, right? But mm-hmm. my my goal is that you can go to the music store and you go, I want to try that, and you're not afraid to. Yeah. Yeah, you might not play it that great, or you might not play it to the tempo that you're supposed, you know, ultimately supposed to. But you know what? Are you getting joy out of it? Are you having fun? Are you still sticking with it? That's, that's, that's what I hope for my students. So I have been lucky. Um, you know, I mean, not everybody is in it for the, with the, the huge passion. Mm-hmm. But, you know, what I've learned uh, is that it's very important if you can as a youngster to whatever you're doing, try and put both feet in at the time. Because you really don't know where, when it's going to come and help you out down the road. And mm-hmm. piano for me, that was, you know, I ended up teaching it uh, and, and never saw that coming. Come to me. Never mm-hmm. thought I would put an album out. Never thought I would play professionally. Never thought, never thought, never thought. But honestly, Catherine, it was just, um, you know, I needed music at that time in my life. I really needed something. And God reminded me of that passion that I had put aside for a little while. I just mm-hmm. hadn't had the need for it as much back, you know, back then. And uh, so I think it's important to cultivate whatever your strength is and, and kind of discover what your potential is. Um, if you can at any age with whatever you do yep yep (laughs) it can happen any time right yep well yeah it's another thing it's it's never too late like really i have a piano downstairs you're going to teach me right when uh we're more allowed (laughs) just call me we'll have fun together i i've had uh over my career of teaching i had few years where I had my Wednesday mornings with just adults and it okay. was so much fun yeah and I don't know I, I remember I had a lady that was um about 86 mm-hmm. she was so spry she would run down Ottawa Street from the bus she'd run up my stairs to <laughs> have a piano lesson and she worked so diligently at it I was so proud of her you know mm-hmm. and she was taking it up for the first time in her mid 80s so, you know, I've had them at five years old and 85. So, yeah. you know, it's not too late to, to put your, your hand to something. And yeah. you know what? Just, just believe in yourself. I used to, 
before I was a singer songwriter, I wasn't a singer songwriter. And one day I said, you know what, after writing for three or four years, and I knew that I wanted to perform, I had to go tell people. And I did cold calls. I'd walk down James Street North, knock on doors like old school stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, you know, this is who I am. And, you know, your kids would go, what are you talking about, mom? You're not a singer songwriter. Well, yeah, I am. I'm just <laughs> not, I'm just not having done it professionally yet. And the next thing you know, you're doing it. And that is the biggest, my biggest takeaway from that is that taking on the persona of who you really want to be mm -hmm. and do, doing, doing it. Um, and that's what I did. I, I wanted to be it so bad. I just, my whole goal was, you know, if people knew my name, they'd associate it with being a musician, associate mm -hmm. it with being a singer songwriter. I want to be remembered as that. And that's, that's what I took out there. And I thought, you know, Joe Blow down the street doesn't know who I am. I'm telling you who I am. I'm a singer songwriter. This is what I do. Mm -hmm. They go, okay. They accept it. So, you know, if you want to be something, be it. Start being it before you even are it. Just take on the persona. I did that and it worked for me. And that's what I put out there as a professional image. This is who I am. I mean, to my girlfriends down the street, yeah, they know me as Laura Keating. I was, you know, stay at home mom. For years, I was this, I was a piano teacher, I was, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But this is what I am now. And you have, if you, if you take on that image and, and present yourself as that, um, you may feel like, oh, am I really that? Yes, you are. I always think of if a person goes to school, let's say they're, they're going to teacher's college. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the day they graduate, they haven't taught in the classroom, but you know, next Monday they've got a job and they're a teacher all of them. That's their title. That's their role. Maybe mm -hmm. they haven't done it for 10 years. They've done it for five minutes, but mm -hmm. they still have that same title. Yep. So you know what? Go for it. Just be who you're supposed to be and, and don't be afraid. That's what I found is fear is the biggest uh block in life mm -hmm. I find mm -hmm. great advice great advice so you're not you're not teaching piano right now obviously due to COVID did you did you halt it for because of the singing song songwriter t singing mm -hmm. songwriting taking over or were you still no, doing I, I halted it just because of COVID um, okay. I was doing, and uh juggling both things and I I was fine with that teaching yeah. was more of a part-time thing and songwriting is part-time too um you know my my goal is to is to keep the singer songwriting going as long as I have the energy and mm -hmm. it, it does take a lot of energy to to do shows um I'm working with uh you know I've been blessed and I really I really believe in in this as what I'm meant to do because the people that I needed on the road showed up at the right time mm -hmm. um and just trusting in 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 myself and in in that this is my path um because you can worry you can worry like i used to worry for a bit about you know would you run out of ideas for songs like mm -hmm. you know you write something and go oh that's great you know is that my last one i remember i sat down one afternoon because uh, i had a bit of a lull I hadn't been writing for maybe a, a few weeks and I thought, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to just write a song today. Right. Mm -hmm. and I remember like I struggled with it for like five hours and I threw it in the garbage. It was just, and I learned a lesson that day. My lesson was like, if I have something important to say that I think is important, it will come out in a song. Mm -hmm. I have to wait for it and be patient. And I've taken that path from that day forth and I don't and I don't worry and I have a great repertoire of music more than I can handle on a regular daily practice basis by far. <laughs> so yeah that's a that's a that's a tax uh a taxing thing in itself is just when you're not playing out on a regular basis with COVID mm -hmm. 
I mean, when you were, you had, you knew you had a show, you would have, you know, your 35, 40 songs ready to go, mm -hmm. like drive through, you know, yeah, there it is. Not too much, just gloss it over a little bit. Keep, you have to just keep things always boiled, you know. But now when you don't have shows looming in the future, it takes a lot of discipline to go, okay, I'm going to rehearse. I, I'm not rehearsing as much as I used to. And, mm -hmm. um, I should be, but I, I'm also giving myself a little bit of a break because you know what? You gotta give yourself a break in life sometimes. Mm -hmm. and maybe just that you didn't have as much time. When things were more regular, um, the songwriting wasn't as much because you were busy. So yeah. now I'm going back to stuff I wrote um, even two or three years ago that kind of got put on hold because it, I just didn't have enough in that direction and mm -hmm. something else came my way. So you just file it and go, I hope to come back to that. So I have some unfinished stuff and I've been looking at that now when I've had some free time. So I finished a song uh, this past week that I, I actually wrote um, in COVID times. It's a song called Simple Things. Okay. And, um, um, I had left it for a while. I had maybe... It really was the chorus that I didn't have the way I wanted. And mm -hmm. I finally figured that out this week. And now I feel good about it. And I feel, okay, that's something I got done finally. But uh, yeah, just, so I guess if you're in a lull in, in, your, in your life for COVID is, is, you know, thrown to for a loop, try and put a positive spin on it. And that's what I'm trying to do. It, it's not always easy, but look at the things that you've, that you left behind, like um, promoting yourself in other ways. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sending my music out to, you know, radio stations that, man, duh, I, sh I could have done that, but I was busy or before I was doing something else mm -hmm. there or didn't think of it then. You have time to think and, and look at it a different way and make mm -hmm. connections with people. I remember um, when I was in radio, before I graduated, I was very intent on building building my resume even though I wasn't working in the field yet mm -hmm. and volunteering was a huge thing I, I did that and I also got paid to work at um, as a news writer at CKOC way back in the day but for awful money but <laughs> it was my goal was that whatever I could do that was related to that field try and do it before mm -hmm. you graduate and you felt good because you had some ammunition going to uh, a job interview. Like, mm -hmm. They'd look at it and go, it looked like you were pretty busy. And I think employers want to see that you're busy. You're doing, you're, you're going to learn something if you volunteer in it. Mm -hmm. And I even do that now because um, my mindset when I was getting into, you know, performing um, with the singer songwriter thing was that, you know what, my mindset for that was say yes more than no. Mm -hmm. so yeah there's going to be jobs there's going to be gigs that are for free um I do some gigs for free um it depends on what it is if it's mm -hmm. for a good cause I like to do that um if it's giving me something else it might be even just a venue that I want to play at that draws me there mm -hmm. that would happen a lot you'd go out for lunch somewhere and go oh my gosh this place looks like it needs music and mm -hmm. I love the vibe or I love the environment of it. And then you pitch there and you see what happens, right? But um, yeah, saying yes more than no has been sort of uh, uh, my little uh, mantra I say once in a while because um, you learn so much and you make, you make connections with people that are like-minded. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you know what? You never know what comes down the road when you, you know, you play somewhere for free or you, you get some joy. It's a joyful thing for me. So what, whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm playing, I'm having fun inside here. Mm -hmm. So I look at jobs in different. Why am I doing that when I'm doing it for this reason, for that reason? Maybe the pay is not the thing. But sometimes the pay's good here and it's terrible there. Things even out. Mm -hmm. you, get, you get things out of jobs. Yep.
I did want to mention though, like just when uh, knowing that you're on the right path, things can fall into place. You go, wow, how, how could that be? That's how I know, that's how I feel that about passion is when you have a passion and then you cultivate it, things come, show up mm -hmm. that you don't expect. Mm -hmm. And that's happened to me. My, I, was, I really could almost write a book on it. People would show up. I was busking. I get noticed by a promoter. I get a concert. Uh, and then that happened when I was up north. I did an open mic. And then I, I did my first concert ever <laughs> in front of, you know, 67, 65 people or whatever. That's small, but it was huge to me. Mm -hmm. What a learning curve. Like, oh my God, I, I've got the stage like for an hour and a half here. Wow. <laughs> And you know, every every little thing that you do, you get better at. And people show up that help you, and you don't even realize. And I have to say that I'm so blessed because the person that I worked with in advertising so many years ago, who was a graphic designer, is my best buddy now. Mm -hmm. And he designed my album, he does my photos, he plays with me on gigs, he's a drummer. And yes. I, met, I didn't know how to re reconnect after 20 years of not seeing each other to be so deeply into music together. Mm -hmm. So I know that it's the path that I'm supposed to be on and to just trust it and just go for it. Just enjoy life and try not to waste time and just try and be productive and creative as possible. That's good advice. Me. It's been good advice. Well, thank you, Laura. It was awesome talking to you and uh, hearing about your career. It's uh, I I know you in the community. I know there's a lot of um, online things going on with your music, um, some music promotion. Oh, yeah, I know it's a it's a hard uh, it's a hard turn to navigate if you're not used to doing it. But uh, yeah. you're doing well. You're doing well out there. Hopefully it'll get better and you can do the live concerts again. I know that's, you know, that's what you're looking forward to and having your students back for your guitar. That I hope so. I hope so. Um, kick around my, my neighborhood. I, I'm sure I'll, I did a porch concert back in August. So mm -hmm. I was talking to my neighbor the other day She's going, yeah, that was so much fun. We had a glass of wine and we listened. So as soon as the warm weather's back, I'm going to get yep. out there and just Maybe we bring a guitar, uh, piano into the middle of the street and we do a lesson from outside. <laughs> hey, it crossed my mind. Bring something out on the deck there and have outdoor yeah. lessons. <laughs> outdoor yeah. piano lessons for everybody. <laughs> you never know, right? Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I know no, I no, talked no. a lot, but I haven't, I, I don't know. Sorry, I hope I didn't talk too oh, much. No, but. not at all. No, it's your story. This is, that's what these are for. It's about your journey and your story. And it's different for every person. So yeah, yeah no, I just really uh, enjoyed talk, listening to your story and uh, I wish you well yeah. and hope things, you know, go, keep continuing going to where, the place where you want to go. And uh, yeah. I hope so. I, I have faith in it. So you know what? Whatever life is supposed to be, um, you got to take it and mm -hmm. roll with it. Yeah, find, you'll find a way. Yeah. Good exactly. luck to everybody looking for jobs and 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 surviving COVID. It it yeah. will, it will end, but we've got to be be creative in the in the while it's going on and find mm -hmm. new ways to cope and 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 be successful. Exactly. You know what? We're all we're all in it together, and uh, yeah. Okay, take care, I'd love Laura. To do thank your you. job too. Thank you. Nope, you're you're helping me do my job by by being a guest on here. I appreciate it and your time. Thank you so much, Laura. Hi, well, I'm I'm privileged to be on here. So thanks so much. Take care. Thank you so much, Laura. All the best. <laughs>